Coming up on Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures, we take you on a Kansas-Canada waterfall combo hunt. Rommel and I also tour the big dog mower plant, and our Kansas hunt features a past winner of one of our social media contests during the hunt. Get ready for some high-flying four-legged action coming up next on Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures. Rommel, come on. Hey, pretty mama, go and grab the scatter gun. Rommel's looking like he's got one more good run. His hips are a little shaky, but his heart's still true. Oh, how that dog loves hunting with me and you. Sporting dog adventures, run, boy, run. Everything you need is here under the sun Everything you need is here under the sun Every year we run a social media contest on the show. This episode we take Matt Ramirez out on a hunt after his tweets and Facebook comments won him the grand prize which was a hunt on the show. Uh, all my life, all the teachers said smart aleck comments won't get me anywhere, but uh, apparently got me on TV shooting some geese, so we're really looking forward to putting some geese down and, and watching some dogs work. Our crew headed to Kansas Premier Outfitters, where we were set up for a guided waterfall hunt with a variety of different opportunities, including water setups, field setups, and there were a lot of birds in the area. We were introduced to a new way to move hay bales, and we used them as concealment so that would cover the profile of our blinds. With all the effort, we we're hoping for a good hunt. Uh, we're in a field now, it's a cut bean field. We've had to set it up a little bit with some hay bales to get it so that uh, our, we're, we're in the shadows and our profile's not too high. They've been working later, at, uh, usually around four o'clock and then right into dark. So hopefully we get a bunch of birds on the ground. Matt's got his dog Sage and we've got Rommel along. Yep, yep, kill him. We found out in a hurry that the birds wanted to be in the middle of the field and not near the edge where we were located. My dog is Sage. Uh, she's a two-year-old chocolate lab. She just turned two a couple weeks ago. You know, she's been great so far. We're still uh, advancing her training, but uh, I couldn't ask for a better companion uh, on the couch or, or in the field. Sage and Rommel only got one retrieve apiece. Sage did a nice retrieve on a goose, and Rommel got to show off his wares with a really nice blind retrieve. We hunted hard in this trip. We tried various setups on water. Well, he worked nice. We broke ice. We cleared holes for birds, but we really struggled. The birds had been in the area for quite a while and no new birds had arrived for several weeks. On one field, we were even forced in the position of being spectators. We had someone set up about 100 yards away and we had to watch as the birds would come in circle our area, and then head right to their decoys. Man, was that frustrating. Kill him. Kill him. Well, our hunt didn't go completely as planned, but that's hunting. It was great hitting the field with Matt and his dog Sage, and we really appreciate all of our sponsors that made this trip possible. 
Not only did Matt get to hunt with us, he also had his license provided by the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Tourism, and he was outfitted with gear from Cabela's. Coming up on Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures, we're in Kansas, so we decided to head over and visit the Big Dog Mower Plant. We get to see firsthand how these mowers are assembled and built right here in the state of Kansas. But first, here's a conservation quick fact. Every hour, a football field of land is lost from Louisiana's coastline. And with it goes vital habitat that fresh and saltwater anglers and waterfowlers from across the country have enjoyed for generations. Louisiana is truly a sportsman's paradise, and we can't just let it vanish. Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures is brought to you by Cabela's Liberty Safe Big Dog Lawnmowers The Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Tourism Cat Pack American Natural Premium Dog Food Browning Browning Pet Products Spy Point High Viz Heavy Shot Mech Shooting Sports The National Wildlife Federation's Vanishing Paradise Program Conquest Scent Sticks Hadel's Game Calls Onyx Maps and Boucher Automotive Group This training tip is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Hey, welcome to this week's training tip. This week, we're gonna talk about the importance of the command hold in your training. With dog training, you basically build a base under your dog. You have your e-collar conditioning, you have your trained retrieve, you have your obedience. So today, we're gonna to show you Miss Micah, who is going through her training, and how to do the hold command. When you apply the hold command, you're gonna use this in the field, whether you're hunting or training, to make sure that the dog holds onto the item that you have in their mouth, brings it to you, and then drops it on command. So what we're gonna focus on is having Micah put something in her mouth, and then we're gonna actually incorporate her obedience with the hold command so that we can get her further along the land or trained retreat. So the first thing we're gonna do is have Micah fetch the bumper and hold it in a sitting position. Good girl. Fetch. Come on. Fetch. Good. Hold. Hold. Good dog. Hold. Again, you're putting a lot of pressure on a dog with trained retrieve. So what you want to do is give them a lot of positive. Good girl. Hold it. Good dog. Hold. Hold. You give the command multiple times because ultimately you don't want it to just be a failure where you give the dog a negative response. You want to give them a lot of positive for doing the command you want. Hold. Drop. Good girl. Oh, it's a good girl. Next, we're going to again have her put it in her mouth. Fetch. Hold. Hold, encourage a good hold, and then we're gonna walk with her. Heel, hold, heel, hold, hold. Good girl, hold, heel, hold. Good dog, hold, sit, hold, drop. Again, we're giving the command multiple times, over and over and over, because hold. yes, there's gonna be a negative hold. response where we're gonna get stern with her if she drops, but we wanna give her all positive, so we create a really good training attitude with her. Hold. Drop. That's this week's training tip. Now back to the hunt. Last season, we partnered with Big Dog Mower Company. We use their mowers for our yard, property, and land management for hunting. Rommel and I headed to Heston, Kansas. We had a great visit. We got to witness a mower start from a sheet of metal in the morning, and then later in the afternoon, it would roll off as a brand new Big Dog Mower. We're here at the Big Dog plant. I'm with Keith Skidmore. Keith. You've got metal sheets, and this is where the mower starts. Right, that's exactly where the mower starts. We use three different thicknesses of steel, make all of our parts just from three different materials. We start with thicker material, we use what we call doublers, so in other words, we'll have two thicknesses of steel in the critical areas of the structure of the deck, and that just gives you all that extra strength that you need. So in essence, what we're gonna do on this tour is we're gonna show people how they're getting a commercial grade mower at a residential price. Exactly. The stuff rolls right through, and then eventually this is heading to the assembly right, line. Right, exactly. It'll get offloaded right to the correct assembly line. And within a few hours, these will be completed mowers, the parts we see right now. 
This was an innovative factory where American Ingenuity produced great products like the Blackjack mower. This is a really cool mower. Yeah. You can actually have it, it actually has a flip up deck, which makes it so that if you need to trade out the blades, you just flip yeah. it up and you can work on it yeah, right there. You need to clean it, you need to change a blade, or just something just doesn't sound right, you can flip it up to almost pretty much 90 degrees, mm -hmm. take a look underneath there, do what you need to do, and flip it back down and head back on the field. Rommel joined me as we went around and we met the hardworking men and women of this plant. There's a pride permeating from every corner from the people that worked here. Rommel and I just got done touring the Big Dog plant and we got to see how a blackjack mower was made. From sheet of metal to end result of this mower, this is a cool product that you need to have. You can see Rommel's already relaxing, knowing that this summer when we have to change the blades or clean out the deck, we can just flip up our Big Dog mower and it's all set. Check out the Big Dog Blackjack Mower. Coming up on Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures, we'll bring you a kid's corner from Louisiana where we attended a wounded warrior hunt. And then we head to Saskatchewan for some great duck and goose action. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter where you can win great prizes from our sponsors, including a puppy just like this little guy from Soggy Acres Retrievers. This segment of Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures is brought to you by Cabela's. And now it's time for this week's Kids Corner. On this week's Kids Corner, my son Clayton and I are in Louisiana taking part in a Wounded Warrior event organized by Operation Military Embrace. Well, this is the uh, annual teal duck hunt sponsored by these good folks in southwest Louisiana. We have 14 warriors participating in the hunt. What we expect out of the event is just a tremendous amount of camaraderie, an opportunity for these young warriors to experience teal duck hunting in southwest Louisiana like there is no place else in the world. Now with this event, it was very cool. They bring these soldiers in, men and women, from all over the area, and they give them a place to stay, they feed them, and they set them up with a hunt. They have great sponsors like Hato Calls that provides them all with a call. Overall, Clayton, you can't say that this event was anything less than a success. Yes, it definitely was a success. Once we were at the event, we were paired up with soldiers Roger and Felix. They took some time to talk to us and explain what this event meant to them. As far as the event's concerned, this is actually you know, my first time coming out to one of these events because of my treatment and my recovery. And uh, more than anything, it's a chance to get out and do things we love to do. We get to talk to the Marines, we get to talk to new people, uh, meet new friends, and uh, we get to do something that all Marines love doing, and that's shooting. All right, Felix Arribian. Yes, sir. Have you ever teal hunted before? Not until tomorrow. It'll be my first time. It's, it's exciting, isn't it? It is, it is. It is fun. They call the duck hunters call them the F-16, so you even got a military connotation. Right. That's how fast they are. I'm looking forward to hitting the field with you guys tomorrow. Hope to do that. All right. Now, Clayton, you also got to meet Miss Junior Armed Forces from that area. Yeah, she explained to me what her role was and how much that event meant to her. So, uh, what's your favorite part about all this? My favorite part, honestly, is being able to represent our military because it's really humbling and I get to know just how lucky I am to be able to be here living in the United States. Now, the morning of the hunt, we got up early, we met these guys where they were staying, we got picket ready, we went out in the field. Yeah, it was great to see him go out and hunt for the first time. saw a few birds. We swung and missed on one group. Yes, sir. But still not a bad day at the office, right, if this is, if this is work? Not at all, not at all. Got a chance to talk to y'all, you know, get to know y'all a little bit better, you know, to hang out with the Marines, you know, and we did, we did a, have a shoot a couple times, so it was awesome. Enjoying it every second. Yeah, it's a great thing they put on for you guys, and, you know, it's a, it's a great way for people to say thank you to you. People always say that, and it's kind of a I always want to say thank you because the same concept of we have your son out here. He tells you thank you, Dad, but 
when he does things, brings home good grades, you just like, no, you don't understand. You make me proud. Mm -hmm. we, we know what we're doing is right. Now, Clayton, I think our viewers really want to know, as a young man, what this event impressed on you. Well, being with them and knowing that they sacrificed their lives for us so that we can go to school and go play with their friends and have a home, it's just, it was awesome. Clayton, I couldn't agree with you more. That's this week's Kids Corner, now back to the hunt. For this part of the show, we're back in Saskatchewan, home of rolling hills, farms, and lots of waterfall. This is a proven stopping point for the migration, and we're hopeful for a good hunt. While we were scouting, there are a lot of birds using the ponds in this field. We knew we were set up for a good hunt. Take them. Bang and bang. For poor Nettie, it was quite the slog through the water and the heavy mud. Once she hit the land, she definitely had a more speedy retrieve. This was Rommel's first trip to Saskatchewan, and we hope to put him to the test over the water. Rommel. Rommel. Overall, the dogs were doing well. They were doing great on their marks. They were dealing with a lot of deep mud, but they'd get to the bird, get in the area of the fall, bring the bird back quickly, yep. which was important because we had a lot of ducks circling the area. Coming up on Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures, with the day nearing the end, we continue our small pond hunt in Saskatchewan. But first, here's another conservation quick fact. Over the past hundred years, most of the rivers that flow into the Gulf have been altered, levied, dammed, deepened, or straightened. We're working to restore more natural flows of fresh water into our coastal areas. This will benefit wetlands and the millions of waterfowl that winter on the Gulf. This product profile is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Quality, dependability, durability. These are the words that I use to describe my Liberty Safe. I've had this model for several years now and it is still just like new. This safe is built in America, right in Utah. It has a 90 minute fire rating and is built more secure than all of its competition. What's most impressive about the Liberty Safe is all the different options you have. If you have a certain color you want, you can get it on the interior and the exterior. All safes have a lifetime warranty. This safe has bolts and locking mechanisms on all four sides of the door which makes it the most difficult to break into out of all of its competition. There are also numerous options on setting up the interior of your safe so that you can not only store your firearms, your ammunition, but also all of your important household documents. No matter which safe you choose, there's a guarantee that you are still getting the undeniable quality from a Liberty Safe. You invest a lot of money in your firearms and your valuables. Protect them with the best safe on the market. For more information, go to libertysafe.com. Back in our pond in Saskatchewan, things were going well. Birds were working and the dogs were performing great. It was a textbook waterfowl hunt. Just when we started to feel good about ourselves, the wheels fell off and we let the dogs down. Oh man, how did we miss that one? I want to have Kevlar on. This bird fell about 20 feet in front of us. Rommel, for some reason, did not see it fall that close, waited out in the pond, and was going back and forth looking for it. What I can say is, I'm not gonna be the one to be critical because I didn't even have my gun loaded.
we're at the end of a fun hunt. Rommel did a nice job. There are just birds circling all over the place. We weren't quite on the X today. There's a slough that I watched probably seemed like 5,000 birds go down in, but uh, we had a lot of fun. If you want to go on a cool hunt, check out Saskatchewan. Stay tuned later this season for more high-flying adventures from Saskatchewan. The action heats up as we test the train and the dogs to get an advantage on the migrating birds. Next week on Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures, we head to North Dakota for a duck and goose hunt. Thousands of birds are in the area, yeah. and we try several setups hunting over different bodies of water. Lots of action and some great dog work fill the screen as we hunt the migration from the other side of the border next week on Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures. Closed captioning provided by Hadel's Game Calls. If you're looking for a puppy, training, or want to use one of our stud dogs, contact us at SoggyAcres.com.